Well everyone, the Xbox One X is easily one of my most favorite devices of all time, and I am so excited every time I get to talk about this console, because it is still a very interesting device when it comes down to it. Now I will tell you, there's probably some other devices that I would recommend buying beyond this one. I mean, you have things like the Xbox Series X, the Xbox Series S, and those types of consoles are definitely far better than the Xbox One X. But there's still some capability with the One X and I'm still you know, very happy whenever I get to talk about this console because it's an older console that came out so many years ago, it's cheaper in the used market now than it ever was before, and it probably would make a lot of sense to buy this type of console than maybe even some of its successors. So we'll talk about that throughout this whole entire video. If you want to pick up some Xboxes I would recommend buying this year though, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now starting off with the outside of the Xbox One X, my, you know, one of my most favorite design consoles of all time was the Xbox One S, the di you know, disc model, and that was one of my most favorite devices of all time. It looked so beautiful. The Xbox One X, I don't think it looked as nice as that console, if I'm being honest, but it still looks like a very, very good device, and that's still something that's very cool going on for this specific, you know, console. So on the front, you have your, well, at the top, you don't really have anything. It's just like the standard you know, black casing with the Xbox logo. You do have the Xbox logo on the front side. There's a power button built in right inside of it. Then you also have your disc, you know, eject button or a little you know, eject button in general. Then you also had your USB port on the front. So that was something that was really cool going on here. You had the vents alongside this particular console. And on the back side, you had your standard ports, two HDMI ports, AC adapter, another USB port, some really, really good stuff going on for this particular console. The thing I loved the most about this particular console that the newer consoles actually removed were, you know, were those two USB ports. Having those dual USB ports right there was something that was genuinely very cool because you could actually just go through and essentially just, you know, plug in an HDMI port inside of this console and essentially get that type of capability where you can have like an HDMI pass through. That was something that was very cool that I actually liked and preferred a lot with this type of device. And if I was going through and if I was like, you know, buying this type of device, it was something that was actually very cool because you were, you know, actually able to go through and, you know, if you had a Nintendo Switch or something or a PlayStation and you only had like one HDMI port on your monitor, well, you could use this almost like an HDMI splitter and essentially just, you know, split up your HDMI my port and you know have a pass through so that was something that was very cool as well and honestly when i look at it that's a very very cool thing going on for this particular device so that in and of itself is another very cool thing going on for this particular console and definitely when i look at the outside of this console it still holds up very well it did come out in 2017 so that was like what like seven years ago so it is pretty crazy that we're still getting this console looking the way it does because it still looks and feels very premium now i will tell you design wise i think the xbox series s looks a little bit nicer than this thing. Like this thing looks like, you know, very minimalistic. I think I like the One S a lot more than both the Series S and the One X, but if I had to rank them, it'd probably go Xbox One X as number three, Series S number two, and then Xbox One S as number you know, one. But a really big advantage of the Xbox One X over the Series S is that disc tray. You are getting that disc tray on, in, you know, inside of the One X, where inside of the Series S, you aren't really getting that. So that can be kind of an issue that you're getting with this particular console or with the Series S, and that can be a really big advantage. Like if you're buying the Xbox One X, you're going to be getting that disc tray, which is genuinely a very, very cool thing. So that in and of itself is another very awesome thing going on here. And when I am buying this type of console, again, that in and of itself is such a cool thing going on here. So I love this console from that particular perspective. And I think that in and of itself is a very, very cool thing going on for this particular device. Now, the controller of the Xbox One X was a completely other beast. I think, you know, even since the original Xbox One, these controls were very good. The only issue I really ever even had with the, you know, the Xbox controller in general was the fact that they weren't really rechargeable. So you had to go ahead and, you know, put in the AA batteries. You could always go ahead and plug it in and use it that way. Or you could always use it as, you know, you can buy a rechargeable battery and plug it in that way as well. So you did have that type of option here, which was actually very cool and I liked having it. But I do think like when I look back at it, it was really nice to basically have that type of capability where we were, you know, basically able to go through and essentially just plug and play with this thing. And that's why I like the PS, you know, the PlayStation controller so much is because I can just go and charge those things up out of the box. These things, you know, you have to buy the battery separately and all that stuff can be kind of annoying. But I do think the controller itself is very nice. It looks and feels very good. It feels very premium and, you know, it doesn't feel like the most thing, you know, premium thing in the end, but it feels very good in the hand. And for a lot of people, this is like the most optimal controller. When people think of like the best, you know, video game controller, a lot of people think of this stuff in this particular device. And I do think that's a very, very cool thing going on for this particular console when it comes down to it as well. 
So for that particular side, I would definitely say the controller, if it had a rechargeable battery, get a massive thumbs up. But the fact that it doesn't, I think it's okay. And it's really not even that big of a deal if it really comes down to it. So from that side, that kind of covers it up, you know, from there. I will also say that when I compare this thing against the Series S and Series X, really the biggest advantage I would say for the One X is really the price tag and the availability of it and the amount of games that you have already for the Xbox One and Xbox 360 consoles. So from the price tag perspective, this thing when it first came out was around $500-ish, so that definitely is like a pretty expensive price to pay for this type of console at that time. But keep in mind that was seven years ago. These things do not cost that much money anymore. So if you are going to go through and if you're going to buy some sort of new device, you're not going to be spending that much money anymore. You're going to be spending significantly you know, less on this particular console, which is a very good thing. At the same time, Xbox Series S's and X's have gone down in value too. So that's another big thing to keep in mind because you can also buy this, you know, buy those things in the used market as well and save a little bit of money that way. But what is a gaming console without the games? And there are so many games available for this particular device, it's not even funny. The best thing going on for the Xbox, you know, One X is that the console is available all over the place. You can buy these things a lot of times in bundles with a bunch of other games that people are selling. And when I actually look at this particular console, it is a very good device. I think there's so many games available for it, it's like not even funny. And like I said, if you are going to go ahead and buy some sort of device, you're going to be getting a really, really good time with this particular console, which is actually a very cool thing in and of itself. Now, the gaming library of this thing, you have all those Xbox One games that came out since like 2011 or 2010, all the way even past that which is a very cool thing. And then you're also getting all those games after it too. Like you're getting all the Xbox One, you know, downloadable games. You're getting your Xbox, you know, 360 games as well. But a really cool and important thing going on for this particular console is the fact that you do actually have, you know, this is a big one, the downloadable games outside of just the standard disc games that you go ahead and that developers are developing for. Because a lot of games that are available right now, you're not actually going to go through and actually, you know, like go inside of a Best Buy and buy those Xbox One games anymore for the most part. Maybe some people are, but a majority of the people are going to go ahead and download the games from the Xbox you know, marketplace, the Xbox store. So this is a really, really big thing because if you're going to go through and actually do that, you're going to be able to still have a lot of games and applications that are you know, still up to date. So even though this is a little bit of an older console, you're not really going to feel like you have that old of a console because it's still kind of supported in a lot of different ways as well. So I think that's another really awesome thing going on for this particular device too. So when I look at this particular console, right, I think, you know, Microsoft did a really good job with the Xbox One X. And I think for the most part, like if you're still in the market, if you're going to go and buy some sort of gaming console, I think this is a very, very good option. You know, I think if you're in the market, you just want to go and quickly buy something. This isn't really that bad of an option. And I think, you know, it definitely, I would recommend people to buy it. But I would say if you have the option to, if you have a little bit more money, buying something like the Xbox Series S or the Series X might make a little bit more sense for the average person. I think that one might be the better one for you know, an, an everyday person. I think if I'm going to go and buy some sort of device, I think that one is the one I'd recommend buying probably for the most part. And I think that in and of itself is a very, very cool thing because the Xbox Series S and X probably have more of a future ahead of it than the Xbox Series, you know, the Xbox One X. But regardless, I think the One X is still great. I would recommend buying it if you don't have any of the consoles, but definitely go for the S or the, you know, the Series S or the Series X if you have a little bit more money to spend. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that'll me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.